Welcome back to the farm. I've got some things I need to talk to you guys about. And I'm sorry, Abby Dog, but you can't come with me this morning. So something bad happened on the farm yesterday, and I really do have to show you guys what I'm doing to address the situation. But look at the pretty leaves. So yesterday morning, I came out here to do my usual morning farm chores and I made a very grisly discovery. Something has attacked my chicken. Oh, it's so sad. It's, uh, it's actually one of my American breast hens. Looks like it just had its throat completely ripped out. I see a few of my other birds out here. I see more feathers. I'm seeing a lot fewer birds. I think I'm missing birds out here too. This is not good at all. Here's my rooster. He looks like he's been attacked too. It's not a good sign at all. Are you okay? He doesn't have any significant injuries, but he doesn't look okay. He's definitely been messed with. Fly paper's ripped down. Yeah, there's just a lot fewer birds out. What's going on? Now that I think some of the birds hear me, they're coming. This is bad. Seems like there are a couple birds out there too. The reality is too, this attack seems fresh like just this morning, like it just happened. Can't tell if this girl's just going through a bad molt or what, but oh man. Like this bird is still pretty much warm. Rigor mortis hasn't set in, like this is recent. So yeah, something attacked my chickens and I don't even know what it is. And like I said, and based on even some other things I figured out later on, it was extremely recent. Like I might've come up here mid attack for, for all I know. It was about 7.30 in the morning when I came up here and, and you saw that. And that's when I shot that footage on my phone that you just saw. All of the chickens had scattered and were like all over the place. And so my best guess is they had actually come out for the morning because the door for the chicken coop opens when the sun rises and something attacked and the chickens went scattering all over the place and most of them went hiding until I emerged and they kind of started to wander their way back around. After doing my best possible head count, I think there were only two chickens that were either killed or missing. So that one American breast hen that you saw there in the video who I actually had named Christina Aguilera. was one of them. And then uh, Brittany Spears, who is actually the other one, she's missing, I can't even find her. And I've looked all around. So it's like my two white hens are missing. And it actually looks like a couple other chickens might've gotten injured somehow, but not that bad. And since the other week, I had already noticed that one of the chickens I had that had been nesting out in the pasture had been attacked and killed and was basically unaccounted for. I'm realizing that at this stage of the game, my current chicken setup is not good enough. And so last night I came out here and I locked everybody up in the coop and they're actually still locked up this morning. So my plan is to take them back down to the lower pasture at this point. And down there, they'll be better protected. As far as what actually did it, I ended up setting up a couple of trail cameras last night too. And what I actually wanna do this morning is check them and see what's on the cameras. All right, let's see what's on this trail camera. I haven't even looked at this, so I have no idea what we're gonna see. Neither this camera nor any of the other cameras that I put out here is actually telling me anything. The only animal you actually see in this video is me. Now, before I move the chicken coop down to the lower pasture, I do wanna take care of the cattle chores first. Oh no, wait, oh. <laughs> Gosh, I'm actually getting paranoid now. You can see this, this is a milkweed seed pod that has exploded and it looks like from a distance chicken feathers. So I was just like looking out here <laughs> and seeing like, you know, a patch of milkweed seeds, another patch of milkweed seeds, another patch of milkweed seeds. And so, yes, I got overly fearful and I'm getting probably a little bit paranoid, but I don't think it's unreasonable. And yes, just like my friend Jess noted in a previous video, we are in the middle of milkweed seed season. Good morning, moo cows. How are you doing? How's it going there, Annabelle? You doing okay? Doing farm chores these days is becoming exceptionally difficult for me. So as you guys are well aware, I actually broke my toe in a previous video. And so ever since that has happened, I've been just hobbling all over the place. The job of working on the farm has become exceptionally unpleasant. Walking particularly on the rough and uneven turf of the pasture is hard, which I don't know, I might have to actually make an entire video talking about some of the things I'm delaying because I'm basically losing about half the month of September and a significant chunk of the month of October on some of the projects that I was planning before the snow starts to fly. Hey, cows! Come on, cows! Fresh grass, fresh grass, come on! Hey, cows! Come on, 
Fresh grass, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. So one of the main reasons I keep my chickens up here is to help control the fly populations around my cattle. And so I know some of you guys are probably wondering if moving the chickens down to the lower pasture is gonna create this ripple effect. And the honest answer is I'm not that concerned about it because we're getting to the time of year where the weather is helping suppress the fly population. Like it was like 44 degrees when I first came out here this morning. I think the high is only 62. And weather like that actually just keeps the flies down naturally. I probably keep the chickens up here for another two or three more weeks because I like what they do with spreading the manure and diversifying the pasture. The amount of work it's gonna take to try to secure the chickens up here and prevent any potential problems like what I had yesterday is actually gonna be a lot higher than just moving them down. And plus with my injured foot, having fewer chores to do up here is probably for the better right now. Back to the lower pasture, chickens. It's actually kind of nice to have them down here because like I can have all birds at once and I can do all their feeding and water all at once and not have to do that multiple times each morning. And like I said, I would have probably moved them into this exact same spot two weeks from now. And so I'm just cheating ahead just a little bit early. Now, I know a lot of you guys are gonna have questions about Abby Dog and whether or not she can be trusted alone with the chickens. And I gotta say, over the course of this summer, she's come even further. Very intentionally, I've let a number of chickens run loose over the farm over the course of this summer, and she really hasn't had any problems with any of them. You know, for example, like when Deb hatched her kids, I started to let those chickens just completely free range down below here, and they did a really good job of free ranging, and Abby Dog did a really good job of not eating them. I think one of the weird and lucky coincidences that might have just happened here is Abby seems to have a real problem with white chickens specifically. In fact, the only adult chicken she ever killed was a white leghorn chicken that we had a few years back when she was a puppy. I'm gonna be watching her very closely and making sure she's not getting too interested. But at the same time, she's a couple years old now and she has been around chickens every day of her life for a couple of years now. The two chickens that just went missing or died are white chickens. So I have fewer white chickens in the flock. In fact, the only white chicken I have in the flock is our rooster, Barry White, who was actually injured a little bit in yesterday's attack but he seems like he's doing okay. Even though he's being a little shy this morning, which might have something to do with his injuries. And then as far as the other animals go, the ducks and geese are used to the chickens and the chickens are used to the ducks and geese. They're roommates in the winter anyways, and so they can easily share the same space. I'm gonna have to sit down to talk to you guys about the next part because my foot is killing me. Good morning, boys. So life with the goaty Otises has gotten very good. I'm really enjoying having these guys around. I don't know how to explain this, but yes, I'm extremely happy to have these goats. <laughs> They're bringing almost dog level joy to me. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. And so all of you goat lovers out there in the comment section who have always asked me if I was gonna ever get goats and said I would love goats when I got goats, you are welcome to leave and I told you so down in the comments section because yeah, I mean, at least with just these three guys, I am very happy with goats. Now I know one point of speculation a lot of you guys are gonna have is actually what had attacked my bird, like particularly Christina Aguilera in terms of like what killed her. Over the last 24 hours, I've been running it through my head. I've been talking to friends. I think, you know, there's a couple of interesting factors here. So typically, if it's a coyote or a bobcat or a fox, my experience is, is that those animals will always just like basically take something and it's gone. Like you might find a couple of feathers, but you're not going to find much else. And so on a surface level, that is something that I kind of rule out because in my opinion, that bird would have been vanished and it wouldn't have been sitting there with its head cut off or ripped apart. And I know to keep this video YouTube friendly, I actually uh, censored out what the images were, but just to give you a sense, here's a drawing of kind of where the injuries actually took place. And so it was like a lot of eating and biting around the neck. The head was kind of roughly intact. 
Uh, most of the body was roughly intact. And so a lot of folks would say that that's like a clear indication of a raccoon. And we do have raccoons around here, but I think it's really weird to think that like a raccoon would catch one of my chickens outside of the coop. Most raccoon attacks happen inside a coop. I actually don't know of any, and if people know of them, please drop them down in the comments because I'm curious about this, but I don't know of any raccoon attacks that have happened outside of coops where like the birds run free because generally speaking, and particularly if it's in the daytime, a chicken is gonna be able to escape a raccoon. And so, I don't know, that's just my theory. If it's an enclosed space, that chicken's done for it, just to be very clear. But like a wide open pasture like I have feels unlikely. You know, one animal that I've had problems with in the past, and in fact, the attack that I had, or the two attacks that I had actually happened right in the house right behind me where the goats live now. I've had mink come in and uh, attack birds, particularly ducks before. I've never had them attack a chicken. And they will bite the neck and around the head and that's typically their MO. And so I guess that's possible. You know, the mink generally try to stay towards the water, which is that way. And like, if you were to go up the hill there, where the pasture is, it's a little bit far from the water, but it's definitely in the realm of possibilities. I think a stoat or a weasel, which is very closely related to a mink, but much smaller, I think that's also a possibility. Because again, this was a bird that I'm really actually thinking came out first thing in the morning at the crack of dawn, which I you know this time of year is like 6.30 or so. And somewhere between 6.30 and 7.30 is when the crime took place. And so, uh, I don't know, like either of those could have done it, but it doesn't feel high likelihood. Nothing broke into the coop and like tried to rip anybody out. So I know that for a fact, that wasn't what happened. And so yes, raccoons, mink, weasels, even skunks, they all could have done it. In the situation, it seems unlikely, particularly like raccoons and skunks. Like they're breaking in at night. They're catching your birds while they're sleepy and kind of out of it already. They're doing it in enclosed spaces. That's typically when you're finding that predator. Something like an attack like that seems unlikely. I think in my mind, some sort of raptor, aerial predator, seems like a decent candidate and, and what I might argue is the most likely candidate. You know, we have hawks here, we have owls here, and like the idea of a barred owl at dusk coming out and swooping down and grabbing a white chicken is not even remotely crazy and, and definitely possible. And, and in my experience with like hawks and owls, they will take your bird a little ways away from where your, your other birds are, but they're not gonna fly too far to carry it away. And usually they're gonna eat as much as they can and then leave the rest. And so based on the facts around what happened, that's definitely in the realm of possibilities too. But yeah, I, I don't know exactly what did it. And so here we are just kind of wondering. And I feel like I did take a good course of action in terms of separating them out and bringing them down here. And I just really hope that my birds end up staying safe going forward. Oh my gosh, would you guys look at this? Look at Abby dog. She's being so good. She's just chilling out, watching over her birds, hanging out with Mr. Toby dog. Abby, I'm so proud of you. Yes, this is what we want to see. Yes, this is what we want to see. Good girl. And don't worry, Toby Dog, I'm proud of you too, but I expected that behavior out of you. Abby, I'm shocked by it. And luckily for these chickens, we have two large white farm dogs to help keep them safe. Oh, you're such a good boy. Yes, you are. So I genuinely thought that that was gonna be the end of this video but I kept my trail cameras out for an extra night just to watch and see what happened in the pasture. And there was a visitor that came through. I'm pretty sure that that was a fox that you see wandering through the pasture. And so it is a relatively reasonable hypothesis to say that maybe it was a fox that killed my chickens. Keep watching our videos and hopefully I'll have an update soon.